Hello, and welcome to the Returning to On-Campus Work at Stetson video guide for employees. My name is Chris Chelberg. I am the Assistant Director of Total Rewards in the Human Resources Office, and I'll be guiding you through the first part of this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Our goal as a university is to work together and stay safe. Stetson University is committed to a safe environment that fosters collaborative learning and intellectual pursuits for its community. The health and well-being of our employees and students is of paramount importance. This guide clarifies guidance to assist our community in returning to campus following a move to remote learning and working in spring 2020 due to the COVID-19 pa pandemic. Stetson's Safer Campus Task Force, the Emergency Management Team, and university executive leadership are committed to a continual reevaluation of the safety of on-campus employees. We utilize resources, including the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Florida Department of Health, American College Health Association, and others to make decisions and suggestions. This guide will be updated as emerging medical and public health information changes. The community be, will be notified when changes are made. In line with recommendations from the American College Health Association, Stetson is using a six-phase return to campus plan with no more than 30% of the workforce returning to each campus location at a time, staggered every two to four weeks for full return. The phases run from June 8th through August 22nd. So what should you do uh, to, when you plan to return to campus? Well, the first thing is to plan to bring any stats and technology and equipment back to campus that you've borrowed while you were away. Let your supervisor know if you have any concerns or are unable to return on the timeline established by your department. Your supervisor will work with you and the HR department to determine the best way to support a request for alternative work arrangements. Some possible reasons for alternative work arrangements might include that you are at higher risk based on CDC guidelines, you live with someone who is higher risk based on CDC guidelines, you are following a self-quarantining protocol, or school and daycare closings have created a child care issue. If any of those come up, please let your supervisor know that you have these concerns. As information continues to be shared across news and social media platforms, the term higher risk keeps popping up. In order to keep yourself and those around you safe and healthy, it's important to know what that really means. Those that are high risk are those that are age 65 and older, those who live in a nursing or long-term care facility, or those with certain high risk conditions, such as heart disease, lung disease, those who are immunocompromised, and those with other underlying medical conditions. Does that mean you're less likely to contract COVID-19 if you aren't high risk? The answer is no. The CDC specifies that people at higher risk for severe, severe illness, which means that if someone who falls into a category on that list does become ill with COVID-19, it would be much more harmful to them than someone not included on the list. No information suggests that one type of person is less likely to get sick or show symptoms. In fact, data from the CDC's March 16th report shows that 38% of 508 people hospitalized in the US for COVID-19 or between the ages of 20 and 54. Remember, COVID-19 is easily spread as it can be carried by an individual and passed on to another person, even if that individual does not show any symptoms. So, wash your hands often, clean frequently used surfaces as much as possible, and stay home whenever you can. According to the CDC, COVID-19 is mostly spread by respiratory droplets released when people talk, cough, or sneeze. It is thought that the virus may be spread to hands from a contaminated surface and then to the nose or mouth, causing infection. Therefore, personal prevention practices, such as hand washing, staying home when sick, environmental pract prevention practices, such as cleaning and disinfection, are important principles that are covered in, in our guide. Fortunately, there are a number of actions that administrators can take to help lower the risk of COVID-19 exposure and spread. We expect all individuals, including employees and students, who come to our campus to complete a screening process. Employees who have been instructed to return to the workplace must conduct daily symptom self-screening each day before reporting to work. An online screening tool is available. This self-screening should be continual and ongoing. 
Employees must be free of any symptoms potentially related to COVID-19 or have had evaluation and clearance through the return to campus process to be eligible to report to on-campus work. If you are considering traveling after your return to on-campus work, please understand the current state and federal recommendations. As of today, June 24th, individuals returning from another country must self-isolate for 14 days. The state of Florida requires self-isolation for individuals traveling from New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. If you, choose to make if you choose to make arrangements for such travels, you are asked not to come physically to Stetson campuses for 14 days. Please contact the Office of Human Resources and your supervisor for further direction. It is important to be able to backtrack your interactions with others for the last 14 days at any given point in time. Limiting who you have direct contact with and where you go helps make this manageable. The CDC indicates that travel increases your chance of contracting and spreading COVID-19, and that staying home is the best way to protect yourself and others from getting sick. Stetson is not currently supporting nor providing funding for international or domestic travel for students, faculty, and staff. Resources for personal travel are available at the CDC's COVID-19 travel site. Thank you, and I'm gonna turn it over to one of my colleagues to talk to you about the rest of the guide. Okay, so reporting symptoms. If you're feeling sick, you get up in the morning, it's time to get ready to go to work and you're feeling miserable, don't come to work. Contact your supervisor and a good idea is to complete that Stetson University COVID-19 report a concern form. But bottom line, don't come to work when you're sick. It's important to stay home and, and keep your distance from others until you are no longer displaying symptoms. If you um, are sick and you've um, contacted your supervisor, um, you can also call Stetson Health Service. You can call us, 386-822-8150. Let us know that you're symptomatic and you'd like an appointment. We'll set that up for you. If it's after hours or on the, on the weekends, you're going to need to um, call public safety um, if your symptoms are significant and you need uh, assistance. So you would call public safety. Their number is 386 822-7300 for the DeLand campus. And then for Gulfport or Tampa, you're calling 727-343-1262. So if you're feeling sick, don't come to work, stay home. Okay, so we've talked about reporting those symptoms, but what are the common signs and symptoms? The CDC um, states that symptoms uh, appear in two to 14 days after exposure. And that's important to know because you hear about 14 days quarantine, that type of thing. But the symptoms will show up two to 14 days after that exposure. So CDC says these are your symptoms to be watching for, and they've become a very long list of symptoms. It's almost just about anything, but it's important to note that if you have a fever of 100.4 or chills, um, a cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, if you're feeling fatigued or having muscle or body aches, if you have a headache, if there's a new loss of taste or smell, that's an interesting one, isn't it? But people are experiencing that. Sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea, vomiting or diarrhea. All of these can be symptoms of COVID-19. And so it's important that everybody, employee, student alike, is screening themselves every day to see if they have symptoms. And one of the ways to find out if you have a fever is to check your temp. Look at that. So easy. 97.5. That's how easy it is. Think about how you're feeling. Check your temp. Do a survey. So prevention and safety precautions. We don't want to get COVID-19. What can we do? Well, we can do just a layer upon layer upon layer of things to help keep us healthy. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands with warm, soapy water, 20 seconds. I don't know. They say sing songs, but just warm, soapy water, 20 seconds of that friction, the warm water running. Um, helps get those hands clean, do that frequently. 
eat well, stay hydrated, get plenty of sleep. Um, you have to really be intentional about those things. I know it's hard to, you know, I'm watching TV, I'm reading a book and the time gets away. No, we need to get seven to eight hours sleep. It's Florida, drink water, stay hydrated and, and eat right. Don't just catch a snack here and there. You need to clean frequently touched surfaces, um, frequently touched objects. So that means your cell phone, your keyboard, your laptops, um, door handles, light switches, get those clean. Avoid touching your face. I know I like, you know, I've got my hands on a common area, got my hands on a counter or something and my eye itches. Well, I've just put whatever was on that counter into a, that mucous membrane of your eye and there's a really wonderful way to set up infection. Don't touch your face. If you're needing to sneeze or cough, into the crook of your elbow or a tissue, don't just let it fly. You don't want to give anybody a shower of, of those COVID-19 little air droplets. Practice physical distancing. You want to stay at least six feet apart from another person. You want to avoid uh, unnecessary outings or social gatherings. Um, it's very important to just maintain at least six feet between you and the other person. And whenever possible, stay home. Um, limit your exposure to other people, even limit your exposure to small groups. I know it's important to get together with family, loved ones, uh, colleagues, associates, but right now in this time, it's important to think about each other's well-being and safety um, and your own. Stay home whenever possible. Okay, face covering policy in Stetson. Wearing a cloth face covering is required on all of Stetson University campuses, including all indoor and outdoor spaces, except in some um, identified areas that would be in your office alone with the door closed or in your residential room when there's nobody, no other guests present. If you're eating or drinking, if you're in gyms or in athletic facilities and if participants are able to keep that physical distancing at least six feet and there's other protective measures in place then you don't need to wear a face covering if you're in residential hall bathrooms you don't need to wear a face covering but other than being in your office being in your residential room eating or drinking being in gyms or athletic facilities or in the residential hall bathrooms Face coverings are the rule. So, there you have it. Look how easy that was. And what this face covering is doing, what this cloth face covering is doing is keeping my little droplets to myself. I'm not sharing them with you. So this is one layer in that whole mitigation series of keeping us as safe as we can keep each other. And so I'm going to be respectful and caring of you. And I'm going to wear this cloth face covering. And they come in all different styles and, and you can use to them to accessorize. This is basic black and, um, and they're washable. Washing is important, just like washing your hands are so important. Washing your face mask is just as important. I don't want to be wearing this day in and day out with all of my shared materials continuously up against my face. I'm going to wash it. It's just as important as washing your hands. How you wear a face covering is very important. I want this to be effective in my role as being helper to keep my stuff to myself and to protect you. I want this to be effective. Wearing a face covering like this is not effective. Anything that's coming out of my nose is being shared with you. That's the way to wear it. Wearing it like this is not effective. It's not going to do a doggone thing to keep my stuff out of your way. That's the way to wear it. Not like that. And, and not ignoring the need to wear it. And now that might happen because we're saying it's required. Um, 
And so if you come across somebody that isn't wearing a face covering, a cloth face covering, and um, you can very respectfully and out of care, concern, and love, because they're not helping protect and be respectful of others, you can say to them, I see you don't have a face covering and, I, and you do know it's, it's required on campus. Did you forget your face covering today? Can I help you get one? Because they're, they are available on campus and we can, we can go to, you know, we can go over to the cub and get you a face covering if, if you've forgotten yours. Um, it would be that simple. And that's very respectful and it relays concern and care. And it also emphasizes the requirement of wearing a cloth face covering. Now, if they're not amenable to your suggestions, if they get ugly about it, well, there's community standards, but we hope it never escalates to, to that level. Um, but we can all put forth what we espouse as Stetson campus members, and that is our, our deep sense of values. And I am going to be respectful and caring of about you and your well-being. And this is just one way that we can do that. Wear your face coverings. It's important. Hello, all. As you know, daily routine cleaning and disinfecting are an important part of reducing the risk of exposure to COVID-19. Stetson will be using the appropriate personal protective equipment, those PPEs you hear about, to clean all surfaces and objects, removing visible and invisible soiling to prepare surface and items for disinfection. Stetson will use EPA approved cleaning solutions with labels with claims against the coronavirus. Uh, there'll be an increase in cleaning the frequency of surfaces uh, that are touched by multiple people, uh, such as tables, doorknobs, light switches, countertops, handles, desks, phones, keyboards, toilets, faucets, sinks, everything in the common areas, classrooms and labs that's frequently touched. Some surface and objects that are not frequently touched will be clean, but uh, may not require additional disinfection. All offices and other spaces that have been unoccupied longer than seven days will receive uh, their normal routine cleaning. Students, faculty, and staff are encouraged to keep their personal items, such as their cell phones and computers, as well as their personal workspaces and living spaces clean. Uh, disinfectant wipes should be used to wipe down shared desk, lab equipment, and any other shared objects or surfaces uh, prior to use and after use as well, uh, if feasible. Uh, we request that uh, individuals do not share items that are difficult uh, to clean or disinfect. Uh, there'll be adequate supplies uh, and equipment uh, available to minimize uh, the sharing of high touch materials where the circumstances permit, uh, such as uh, dealing with art supplies or lab equipment or some computers. Other times, uh, those items will be limited to use by one group of students uh, at a time so that cleaning and disinfecting between student uses can occur. Uh, we encourage uh, that everyone avoid sharing though uh, as many electronic devices and even common items like books, pens, and other learning aids as much as possible. Six feet uh, between workstations and coworkers uh, should be maintained at all time. And departmental microwaves, kitchens, and refrigerators are restricted to employees in your direct area. Uh, I ask that everyone request that students do not use these items uh, until uh, further notice. Employees should avoid office gatherings, break rooms, and unnecessary visitors in the workplace. Uh, as far as cleaning your workspace is concerned, uh, 
the first thing to do is evaluate your workplace to determine what kinds of surfaces and materials make up that area. Uh, most surfaces and objects will just need normal routine cleaning. Frequently touched surfaces need to be disinfected to reduce the risk of germs uh, on those surfaces and objects. And in those situations, again, use it. An EPA approved disinfectant uh, for those items that are most frequently touched. Again, like tables, doorknobs, light switches, countertops, desks, phones, keyboards. Everyone should consider what items can be moved or removed completely uh, to reduce the frequent handling of those items uh, by multiple people. And once again, if your workplace has been unoccupied for seven days or more, it will only need your normal routine cleaning to reopen that area. This is because the virus that causes COVID-19 has not been shown to survive on surfaces longer than this time period. Hello, Stetson community. My name is Benicia Townsend Porter. I am the Director of Student Development and Campus Vibrancy within the Division of Campus Life and Student Success. I aim to share with you a little bit about how my family and I have been affected by COVID-19, as well as a bit of information regarding the virus and your return to the Stetson campus. My family and I have unfortunately lost eight people due to the pandemic. Our loved ones ranged in age and health condition, making us astutely aware that anyone may be susceptible to the virus and that it is crucial that everyone engage in safe practices as prescribed by health officials and community governance. I say to you, please, please, please take it serious. It's not a joke. Taking the proper precautions may save your life and or the lives of those around you. Staff from Human Resources on both campuses are prepared to work directly with you with the help of Health Service if you feel you have come into direct contact with the virus causing COVID-19 or if you feel that you are developing symptoms. Our goal is to support you Health Service will consult by phone at no charge to any member of the Stetson community. That is, if you are a student, a faculty member, or a staff member on the Delan, Tampa, or Gulfport campus. We also have an after hours protocol in place to mitigate immediate risk and allow for follow-up during business hours as appropriate. Stay home or leave the workplace and notify your supervisor if symptoms develop. The campus is prepared to take several steps if someone feels that they are sick. Step one, anyone who has symptoms of COVID-19 should call Stetson Health Service at 386-822-8150 for a consultation. Our team at Stetson Health Service is supported by staff from both Stetson and Advent Health, a major hospital and healthcare group. This phone consultation is free and available to any community member that is staff, students, and faculty from any of our campuses. Stetson community members can use their insurance or self-pay at Stetson Health Service visits, that is in person or from formal telehealth visits. But we want to emphasize that a phone consultation for COVID-19 is absolutely free. Staff at the College of Law can provide a local community referral resource list to anyone who needs it. Step two, Stetson Health Service will conduct a risk assessment for COVID-19 over the phone. This involves answering a number of health and exposure questions. They consult with the Department of Health regularly on cases and strategy. If they believe the community member needs to take further med medical steps regarding COVID-19, they will move to the next step. If not, they will assess the individual's need and work to help them. Step three, 
The community member will be strongly encouraged to sign a release of information for Stetson Health Service to communicate with relevant Stetson support staff regarding their needs and exposure. Personal health information is not shared. The main point, point people at Stetson are. For DeLand students, Lynn Schoenberg, our Dean of Students. For DeLand employees, Betty Whiteman, Director of Human Resources. For Gulfport students, Jocinda Hudson, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs, and Michael Pridemore, Director of Public Safety and Emergency Management Coordinator. For Gulfport employees, Pam Skolagrakas, Director for Human Resources. Step four, the community member will answer questions about their current living and working situation, including where they have been in the last 14 days and who they have had close contact with. These questions were developed with help from the Florida Department of Health, as well as Stetson experts who know how people generally interact on our campuses. Step five, Stetson Health Service is assisted by additional staff to get the community member the care they need. This includes access to COVID-19 testing. For residential students, staff is equipped to support them in self-isolation in their rooms if they choose not to go home for their isolation period. Depending on their residential space, they may be able to stay in their space during the isolation period. For other spaces, we can temporarily move the student they just need to take what they need with them. Residential students in DeLand who are in isolation and do not have other access to foods in their rooms or apartments will be offered meal delivery through dining services. There is no extra financial charge to the student in these situations. Students who live off campus also are supported in talking through their living needs. Staff are available to assist students in helping their parents understand what is happening. If students at the College of Law are in need of food or other essentials, they can contact Student Affairs at 727-562-7808. For employees, Stetson Health Service will assist in finding medical care as needed. They will connect the employee to human resources for support if the employee cannot physically be on campus or cannot work. Human resources will notify supervisors as needed and will share options with the individual. All community members are cleared to come back to campus physically through the help of the Florida Department of Health and Health Service. The clearance is communicated to staff who can help such as human resources and residential life. Step six, to gauge community impact, all new potential cases of exposure or illness related to COVID-19 are appropriately tracked and traced with the help from Florida Department of Health. Stetson staff have also developed a complex tracking system to help identify overlap of locations or concern on campus. We have specially designed contact questions based on how we know our community interacts with our campus. For example, in DeLand, we don't just ask, have you been to the dining hall? We ask, have you been to the commons coffee shop or hat track? Each of these potential exposures or contacts is then followed up. For direct exposure, the Florida Department of Health and Stetson Health Service do direct and immediate follow-up with other individuals who may have been exposed, and then those individuals are supported with all of the steps in this document. For indirect contact, for example, being in a classroom together but not touching or sharing items. 
An email notice is sent to highly encourage individuals to socially distance and monitor their health. Step seven, many staff members, including those mentioned in this document, provide continued support to individuals who need it based on circumstance. Often this is a connection to resources like healthcare providers, academic success, the COVID financial relief fund, and much more. Anyone who needs this support should not hesitate to reach out to the appropriate staff listed above. Now, let's cover a few FAQs about handling illness on campus. Number one, cleaning, disinfecting a suspected coronavirus space that is a residence hall room, classroom, and or office. Spaces are cleaned as soon as possible by our facility staff based on best practices set out by the CDC. EPA registered disinfectant is utilized with a focus on commonly touched spaces. Number two, will Stetson tell us about COVID-19 positive community members? Well, Stetson is committed to informing the community if an individual tests positive for COVID-19 and may have interacted with other members of the Stetson community within the window of exposure set by the current CDC and DOH guidelines. This notification will be by email. We will do everything possible to protect the privacy of individuals. Number three, what about after business hours? A full after hours protocol is in place. We know people don't just become symptomatic during business hours. Please call DeLand Public Safety at 386-822-7300 or College of Law Public Safety at 727-343-1262 if you have urgent needs to initiate our protocol after hours. Urgent needs would include that you are a residential student who is symptomatic or exposed. Your need is urgent because we need to discuss isolating your room. Community members can also fill out the COVID-19 reporting form at www.stetson.edu forward slash report it. These forms are checked regularly, including weekends and screened for urgency. If you need immediate medical attention, always call 911. Number four, what if I use a doctor's office off campus? All members of the entire Stetson community, students, staff, faculty, Chartwell's dining employees on our, De on our DeLand, Colfport, or Tampa campuses are highly encouraged to call Stetson Health Service for a consult regarding COVID-19. Your off-campus doctor may treat you, but we still need to know what is going on and respond to potential exposure concerns. We also are here to help. You don't have or need to figure out these things and details alone. Number five, what if I or someone else is sick or fears exposure? Any member of the Stetson community who has been to campus in the last 14 days and feels they may have come into direct contact with the virus causing COVID-19 or is experiencing flu-like symptoms, that is fever over 100.4, cough, shortness of breath, possible nausea or diarrhea, possible loss of taste or smell. Those people should alert Stetson immediately. Fill out the Stetson University COVID-19 Report a Concern form. During business hours, call Stetson Health Service at 386-822-8150. After business hours, call DeLand Public Safety at 386 822-7300 or College of Law Public Safety at 
one, two, six, two. If you are concerned about someone else's exposure, also let us know. Don't just tell them to do so. This applies to our College of Law students, faculty, and staff. Now, let's talk visitors. Visitors to campus buildings continue to be restricted. Until further notice, non-essential visitors will not be approved. All visitors to campus buildings must be screened using a self-reported symptom and travel assessment and have vice president, associate dean, dean of College of Law approval before coming to campus. If a prospective visitor is not permitted to enter our facilities at this time, it will not hinder nor limit their ability to continue their association with the university. All efforts will be made to conduct the planned business remotely or reschedule the, biz the visit at a later date. All approved visitors must follow Stetson's physical distancing requirements. That means stay at least six feet, about two arms length from other people. Do not gather in groups larger than 10. Stay out of crowded places and avoid mass gatherings. Wear a mask or face covering in spaces used by multiple people or in situations where a minimum distance of six feet from other people is not achievable. In general, Campus visitors are required to complete the Stetson University visiting screening form. Admissions visitors will be screened separately. At this time, employees are not permitted to bring their children into campus buildings. Employee resources. On this slide, you may connect to the COVID-19 communications website. There you will find many important updates and any other relevant information regarding COVID-19 on Stetson's campus. University signage and education and awareness elements will also be able to be found across our campus. You will also find across the floors, six feet markers in common spaces where groups gather. You will find business access and visitor screening guidelines please make sure to have your visitors adhere to these guidelines. Physical distancing office signs will be placed across the campus for reminders. Some of our education and awareness elements will include our COVID-19 communications website, as mentioned earlier on this slide. Stets and announce videos such as these social media, webinars, and digital signage. Please make sure to stay updated regarding all of the COVID-19 precautions and guidelines. It will take all of us together to make Stetson University a safe community. Thank you for listening and please stay safe.